Hey everybody, it's Keith with Bob CNC. Welcome to Shop Talk. I'm here as always with my best friend Robert. And I'm here with my best friend Keith. And we're going to talk about firmware. Woo boy! Now there are two kinds of people when it comes to firmware. You've got black box people and you've got geeks. Now there, there's nothing bad about being wear a black box. <laughs> yeah, I should because I really don't care what goes on the inside. Yeah, most of our customers don't. I mean, they just want to uh, push the button and have the machine to work. Yes. But uh, And what is wrong with that? I don't know. I it's think life would be much better if everything was just a nice, simple black box. Seems, but it isn't. Seems boring to me. It seems like to I me, like boring. you need to know how it works. No. Okay. Go well, ahead. Let's work on how it works. Well, so one of the, one of the things that I'll ask you to get started here is uh, we've got a whole list of firmware values in our manuals. Yeah. And uh, where did they come from? Who put them in there? Why are they there? So uh, Sonny is the lead developer of the gerbil firmware. Right. And he decided that you're going to need to be able to change certain values if you want to run a CNC machine. So when he decided to do that, he put dollar sign and then a number. So there's like dollar sign one all the way up to like 132, even though some are skipped, but you know, we won't go there. Right. I have no idea why. But these are the values that you can change in the firmware. So you need a software to change it. You could actually just use a serial connection. But by far the easiest way to do it is using the Universal G-Code Center, since that's what we do. So I'm going to go ahead and connect. And then I want to show everyone here, as soon as I connect, if I drag this window up, these are the firmware values. And these are what uh, Keith is talking about in your manual. Uh, if you've uh, talked with me about tech support and I, I want you to turn off soft limits, you'll see that, uh, you probably can't see this, but if you look on yours you will, the dollar sign 20 should be equal 1. That means they're on. So what I would do is I would just type in here dollar sign uh, 20 equals 0 and I hit enter. So I just type those values in here. And now if I do another command, which uh, you should remember is dollar sign, dollar sign, it will give you these values back. And again, you won't be able to see this, but try this on your own. You'll see that dollar sign 20 is now zero. It really is that simple to change your firmware values. Which means you've set your, or you've turned your soft limits off. Yeah, now my machine will crash into the edges. It won't stop jogging. Good for diagnostics but not good for running the machine. Why is it good for diagnostics? Well, because in the machine set up the way that we've configured it is, is it's going to come up in the alarm mode that you see up here, and, uh, and it needs to hit uh, to be homed or synced with the computer before you can actually use it. So you'll have to hit home machine button, it goes and home successfully, yep. and then this goes to idle mode, you're ready to jog and move around. However, if something happens to where it doesn't home successfully, you can't get it out of the alarm mode, right? So if we turn off soft limits, okay. I can then click the uh, unlock machine, and then I can jog around using my jog controller right here, right, uh, once I set it up, to uh, see what's moving and what's happening. However, I shouldn't run my machine without soft limits. Now, if you get into a, a, a situation where your machine's acting weird or worst case for me is you've you've played with the setup wizard right and and you change firmware values which i guess i could show you that really quick uh this is something that we don't want you to do right and i'll show you how to fix what i'm going to do here in a minute so if you come up here and go to uh, uh, the setup wizard this is really for people that understand uh what's going on it was just an easy tool watch w watch what i want what i want you to watch is Let's say that I click this button and click this button and click this button. Did you watch what's going on down here? I'm changing dollar sign of three, the firmware value, from one to three to seven. Well, let's say, well, I don't want to do that and I hit cancel. Guess what? It still changed. So if I would type dollar sign, dollar sign again to redisplay my values, you would see that that value that we talked about, dollar sign three, is seven. It's not supposed to be. So if you're in the setup wizard and you're just trying some things out, there is no cancel. It's changing that. That's the danger of being a geek. Yeah. Black box guys don't do that. Oh, they do. <laughs> Black box guys do this, Keith. <laughs> I haven't, but go ahead. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
So anyway, uh, the bottom line is, is there's no harm done. Right. Uh, my favorite command, obviously, uh, if you know me very well, is dollar sign RST equals dollar sign. And uh, we'll have Kristen put that up there. And if you don't spell it right, it'll give you an error. So you got to do it again. Dollar sign RST equals dollar sign. It'll say OK. And that will set all of your firmware back to the default values. Now, why would I want to change my firmware? Well, uh, there's, uh, for instance, the, you want your machine to home faster or slower. Uh, if you look in there uh, on your uh, manual, you could find that. Let me see if I can find it really quick. Uh, it's dollar sign 24 and dollar sign 25, right? Uh, we just talked about if you want your uh, soft limits off so you can do some troubleshooting, dollar sign 20 equals zero turns them off. So I've got a question. Okay. All right. You've got the... Uh homing speed set at uh, 250. Yeah. Why? Well, the, there's actually two home speeds, right? The first one, the dollar sign 25 is set at 2000. It's in uh, metric units, but this is just how fast it's going to go to find it. And then, so it's going to go fast, the 2000 millimeters right. per minute the first time, and the second time it's going to back off to 250. We wanted to slow that down so that it barely bumps the switch at a nice pace so that it's more accurate you may find that you want to slow that down even further. So you so could say... Is, but this is something you experimented with. Uh, absolutely, yeah. We set it up to see you know, what would give us the best values. Okay. But you might find that you want it to be slower or, you know, I don't really care if it's that accurate. I'm just going to raise it so I can do faster. I don't know that it would save you anything because you're only home once, right? But uh, there's some other ones in there uh, that you may want to uh, play with, but you may want to set them back once you figure out what's going to go on. You know, if you're like me and you just need to know the extremes. So, uh, for example, let's say that we wanted to change how fast the Z could travel. Okay. Right. So here, if I look at uh, uh, my Z maximum rate, it's dollar sign one twelve. Right. And we have that set at two thousand millimeters per minute. Uh, the reason we set it at that is because three thousand didn't work and 1000 was too slow. So John went through some testing on our evolution and said, this is the value that will not skip steps and give us the, the quickest way that we can get there. So right? these things have been determined by practical experience. Absolutely, yeah. We've experimented and we've thought these are the values that our machine will run for. So no, the bottom line is though, is that you can change them to what you want and if you mess up, you can always do the dollar sign RST equals dollar sign. If you've played with the setup wizard at all, I'm going to recommend that you do the dollar sign RST equals dollar sign. Okay. Now, another issue that comes up is we've had people with uh, Estocam. Yeah. So, everybody knows I think Estocam is one of my favorite softwares, but it's not my favorite software for sending G code. Although, if you're a geek and you like that kind of stuff, and you have an E-Series, you would be able to use it. However, for our Evolution Series or our KL Series, which is now what we manufacture, the Estelcam sender will not work because it doesn't handle the self-squaring gantry that comes standard on those machines. What, what you need to understand is it's a completely different uh, firmware. There are no dollar sign values. Matter of fact, you can't even use UGS. It's a different firmware that Christian, the author and creator of Estelcam software and firmware is, is available. So but if you have downloaded that, yes, because you thought, well, that's, that's kind of what I ought to be using, you're going to find out that your machine won't work. Yeah, if you have an, an old E-Series machine, right, and you understand what's going on, it will work. Uh, I have Estelcam up right here, and I'm going to go to the setup. Uh, the controller uh, and you'll see that you have all of these values here the you know the steps per minute he does it differently you'll see that uh, if you go to the inputs he has his home switches uh, how you you can uh, you can uh, set those up right you just need to understand it's completely different firmware if you indeed have put it on there and you decide that ooh okay I don't want to do that uh, Christian understanding that people might want to do that actually has a restore button that I've got highlighted here. So if you put this firmware on there, you can open it back up, connect and hit restore. It'll put the gerbil firmware back on. 
Now, if you don't do it that way, how else can you get your... Good question. So we have all of our flash files out there in our troubleshooting guide. There's a, a, a Bob CNC flash folder that you can download that has our firmware from our E-series, E-series with the self-squaring, Evolution, and the KL7. And, and when we make our next product, we'll put that firmware out there. And furthermore, for you guys that are wanting to know what modifications that we made to the firmware, send us uh, an email at, at Shop Talk or, or at the help desk. I would be glad to share the modifications uh, that we've made to our firmware from the original Gerbil 1.1 firmware. And so guys, any questions, be sure to get a hold of us at Shop Talk at BobCNC.com. Until next time, we'll see ya. All right.